It's June 21st. You're sitting on your couch with your bowl of popcorn and your can of Yebisu, ready to enjoy Netflix's release of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Sure, they redubbed the original voice cast and they retranslated the subtitles, but this is Netflix we're talking about. They wouldn't f up a beloved franchise like Ava, right? Right? Spoiler warning! They did. Some of the changes, like the removal of the iconic song Fly Me to the Moon from the show, are pretty understandable. Netflix was unable to get the rights to the song because the cost was too high. Which seems like a bit of a cop-out if you ask me, coming from a service that paid $100 million for friends. But fine. Then there's the head scratchers, like changing how the characters pronounce nerve. Special agency nerve? Nerve. 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 Nerve headquarters. It's literally spelled N-E-R-V like the nerve without the E at the end, okay, fine, but nerve, guys, why would you change that? To, you know, not translating on-screen Japanese text in the dub or sub or changing the line from the nerve logo from all is right in the world to all is very good, which is even more baffling because the line comes from an English poem by Robert Browning. That shit's in the public domain, guys. All these changes had fans justifiably upset, but then we got to episode 24 and fans went ballistic. Episode 24 centers around Shinji's relationship with Kaworu, a beautiful new Ava pilot who isn't shy in telling Shinji how he feels about him. This is a shock for Shinji because all of his other relationships have been fraught with doubt. Kaworu is the first person to tell Shinji he loves him, and their intense bond makes the ending of the episode that much more gut-wrenching. I was broken. At least, that's what happened in the version released by ADV in 1998. In the Netflix dub and sub, Kaoru never once says that he loves Shinji. And instead, he says he likes Shinji and that Shinji is worthy of his grace. What the f is that? Naturally, the internet exploded as fans were divided between those who were outraged and those who just wanted us to calm down. Those in the latter camp had two points, that one, this new translation is more faithful to the original Japanese, and two, that changing the line doesn't matter and shippers are making a big deal about nothing. Bye. So let's address both those points and why they're completely wrong. First, let's talk about translations. Most of the time, the most literal translation is not the best one. Things like wordplay, idioms, subtext, and cultural context can all easily be lost when you just translate something directly into another language. If you've ever used Google Translate, you've seen this in action. Also, it has made for some very awkward uh, DM conversations with me in Spanish. Guys, I love you. Bye. And to make matters more difficult, not only are English and Japanese structurally different languages, but the cultures they come from have very different values and histories. Take, for example, the word oishi, which is often translated as delicious. But that isn't quite right. In Japanese, you can say that a restaurant is oishi. But to say a restaurant is delicious is kind of awkward in English. You would say it's enjoyable or very good or that the food is delicious. So oishi means something more like an enjoyable eating experience. It's a very subtle difference to be sure, but that's part of the reason this is so difficult. Here's another example from Evangelion. In Japanese, they don't have swear words the way we do in English. Words like so, which means sh are considered vulgar but aren't censored, while words for genitalia are. Instead, they have informal titles and verb endings, which makes sense for a culture that places so much value on respect and social hierarchies. So in the end of Evangelion, when Shinji says, I'm so fucked up, what he's actually saying in Japanese is closer to, I'm the lowest of the low. And that's what Netflix went with for their translation. But anyone who speaks English can see that the first line is far more powerful and emotional than the second. The second one, I've never heard a human speak those words. I dropped this. I'm the lowest of the low. Point is, we don't really use that, you know? It's just not how it, it's not natural. And that needs to be taken into consideration. So what is the cultural context we need to keep in mind for this episode? Saying I love you in Japanese is not as easy as saying it in English. First of all, there are several different ways to say it. Daisuki dayo can mean I really like you or I love you depending on the context. This isn't so different from English, where you might tell your crush that you like, like them. Aishiteruyo means I love you in a romantic sense and is pretty much only used between romantic partners. But it isn't especially common. Couples might never say Aishiteruyo to each other even if they care deeply about one another and have a long committed relationship. 
Men in particular don't like to say it, and many Japanese people say they would feel too embarrassed to ever say, I love you. Others feel that saying I love you too casually would cause the phrase to lose its meaning. So with all that in mind, let's get back to Kaoru and Shinji. When talking to Shinji, Kaoru says, Sukite kutosa, which is translated as, it means I love you in the ADB translation. It means I like you in the Netflix one. As we mentioned, I like you can imply romantic interest in English, but the key word there is imply. I love you is unambiguous, but in Japanese, it often comes down to the speaker's inflection to indicate whether they mean love, like, or fondness. Each makes sense in this context for these characters, but one has a far more dramatic impact. Sukite kotosa implies a laid-back attitude, sort of like, I love you, man, which could mean Kaoru is putting less emphasis on the love part. Typically, confessions of love have more gravity. At the same time, Kaoru isn't the sort of character who represses his emotions, so a more casual confession might be natural for him, too. But how'd the Netflix translation end up with, you are worthy of my grace? My best guess is that koi, which translates roughly as favorable feelings, was substituted for grace to fit an angel's reference in there? That's what I got. So if the old translation wasn't inaccurate, why would Netflix change it? And the answer to that is that Netflix didn't change it. Ano did. Well, okay, not Mr. Director himself. Translator Dan Kanemitsu, who's credited on all Netflix episodes, worked for Studio Kara, Ano's animation studio. On Twitter, Dan explained his feelings about the line in question. He said, It is one thing for characters to confess their love. It is quite another for the audience to infer affection and leave them guessing. How committed are the characters? What possible misunderstandings might be taking place? Leaving room for interpretation makes things exciting, which is in line with what Ano said about Ava previously. I guess. In the book Hideaki Anno Schizo Neon Genesis Evangelion, Anno says, Eva is a work where the remaining process of completing the work is in the hands of the audience. I place a strong emphasis in that relationship. After you get to a certain point, I want them to make their own judgment. There are portions where things are left ambiguous, so it all depends on how you view and judge it for yourself. I think the character of the person, for example, a personality, reveals itself in that process. Eva is a work where if 10 people watch it, not all of the 10 will compliment it. In that sense, it's very Japanese. Am I saying that Ano directly meddled in this translation because he feeds on the frustration of his fans the way Godzilla feeds on nuclear waste? Who knows? But it does make sense that Kara might have had the translation dial back their relationship so it was more in line with Ano's it means whatever you want it to mean mentality. So now we get into the second part of the argument, which is why does this matter? Who cares if these two anime boys love each other or not? I mean, besides me, obviously I care. And so do tons of Ava fans who took to social media with fury when this change was revealed. Why is this so important to us? And the answer to that? is all about representation. You'd have to be living under a rock at this point to not know that there's a problem with depicting LGBTQ plus people in the media. And a big part of that problem is that they simply aren't depicted. It's true in the United States and it's true in Japan. This is how Sailor Uranus and Neptune get turned into cousins, people. The best of cousins. But Ava was shockingly and refreshingly clear that the feelings between Shinji and Kaoru are romantic. For kids watching Ava on Adult Swim in the 2000s, it might have been the first time they saw a queer relationship like that. Maybe that's why that one episode sparked a fandom that lasted decades. And while Yaoi and Yuri are definitely a thing, it's still uncommon to see queer relationships in anime outside of those genres, especially in a shonen series like Ava. Even with the straightforward declaration of love, some Ava fans still refuse to see Kaoru and Shinji's relationship as romantic. Queer erasure in media has a long and awful history, and fans who want to see more of it are often dismissed as delusional fangirls and perverted shippers. For a non-anime example, this is why it was such a big deal when J.K. Rowling announced that Dumbledore was gay. There's nothing in the text that alludes to his sexuality one way or another, but everyone just assumed he was straight. Because, well, that's still the default. And that's also why the decision to not explore that aspect of his character in the Fantastic Beasts films was so disappointing to fans. There's a million other straight characters out there, so deciding how explicit to be about their relationships only really matters to the story. But until queer characters are as common as straight ones, every time a queer relationship is omitted or toned down, 
it's a problem. And do you want to know what the real tragedy of this is? If fans weren't so busy being mad about this debacle, maybe instead we'd be talking about how cool it is that Casey Mangelo, a non-binary person, is the voice actor for the main character in a super popular anime. Like, that's awesome! And I couldn't find a single article about it. And look, I'm gonna get real with you for a second. We try to be as unbiased as possible. And maybe you will decide that I am just one more shipper. But remember how I mentioned that skite kutosa sounds ambiguous? Love is the word that was removed. Love can also be ambiguous because in the English language, you can also add an inflection that changes the meaning of the word. Why not play with that instead, Netflix? Why remove the word altogether? There's two reasons for me why I believe that word was necessary. It's not just the queer representation, it's also the character development. Because love is a word that Shinji has never heard in his entire life. And it being spoken to him by a boy is also important. Because boys expressing love is not something common either, especially in a shonen anime, not said directly like that. So there's several issues that to me are being kind of buried here that we don't want to deal with. And it's almost like Netflix is trying to just make it more comfortable for who, I wonder. And that's kind of the point. It feels like a watered down version of what love should be. It feels like love as a word is somehow a threat and it's being treated that way. Sure, maybe now it's more ambiguous. Maybe now it might have more to do with Kaoru being an angel and how that is grace in itself is the grace of God and it's related to the theme of the anime. But within the context of the actual scene, the impact that Shinji received as a character had nothing to do with God's grace. It had to do with the way that he had never heard that word in his life. And anybody who has seen the anime knows what Shinji's relationship with his father is like and what male relationships have been to Shinji, which is fraught with just isolation and affection is not there. And there's another detail, even if we're talking about how, you know, the concept of being worthy of one's grace has to do with the angel aspect of Kaoru. Kaoru has become a human. He is not expressing or presenting himself as an angel within this episode. He is presenting himself as a human, someone who is taking human experience and human form and having a relationship with Shinji from a human level. It's not like he's in the shower scene, well, the bath scene, and, and, and he's, you know, Shinji sees a shadow of a wing or anything that hints at Kaoru trying to maybe hide or express his angelic origin. The entire time, the relationship is a friendship, it's a human friendship, and therefore it's a human expressing a human emotion. That to me is more powerful in terms of context than taking the excuse, again, that's my opinion, of Kaoru being an angel and using that as a reason to change the line. That's why to me, the removal of the word love, it's a problem. Anyway, done with my personal opinion. Hope you don't mind, Adrian. Okay, so cooling down. Where does that leave us? Um, should you watch the Netflix dub? That's up to you. If you've never watched Ava before, first of all, why are you even watching this video? I just spoiled like everything. Um, please don't kill me, spoiler police. But the Netflix version is a good place to start. And if you're a longtime fan, then the best you can do is keep talking about it. Let Netflix know that they should have done better. As we talked about in our last video, anime is expanding overseas and Netflix is making a big push to be a part of that. But if Netflix sticks off a bunch of anime fans, well, they still have all those tweens who love friends. And Ross's fajitas. All we can hope for is that next time Netflix will be a little more careful with its translations. Heck, maybe even reconsider and swap them out. Just a thought. In the meantime, we'll always have fan fiction. Or hey, pick up the manga, which is slightly different from the anime, but way more explicit with the Kawashin content than the show ever was. Trust, no room for interpretation. None. We make a lot of videos like this one at Get in the Robot, so if this is your jam, subscribe. I'm Crystal Marie, and we're made in NYC because we can't move to Japan. <laughs>